Come listen to the story of the Lambton Worm It will make you shudder, it will make you squirm Like a serpent or a dragon or a fishy kind of lizard Or the nightmare creation of a witch or a wizard Quite a weird and evil creature was this monstrous worm Yes, a horrid kind of vermin was the Lambton Worm. Our strange tale begins in the land of County Durham, in the days of knights in armour, mighty castles, daring do, when a youngster called John Lambton, on a fine and sunny Sunday, went a fishing on the river. It seemed quite the thing to do. On a fine and sunny Sunday, it seems quite the thing to do. But no, John, cried his noble father. No, son, it's not right. Sunday is the Lord's day, John. We pray and rest from morn till night. For those who live along the weir, the custom's plain, the rule is clear. So set them an example, for you are the son of a knight. Yes, set a good example, and one day you'll make a knight. A wealthy crew, the Lamptons, with a castle on the hill, and land, and titles, wealth, and pride in the Lampton family name. John was the eldest son and heir, the hopeful next in line, but John did just what pleased him, and went fishing all the same. Despite his father's warning, he went fishing all the same. That bad lad, not a local folk, he should be in church. church. Instead of wasting Sunday morning catching pike or perch, or, perch. or trying to tickle rainbow trout like in any village layabout, his father is too soft. His father is too soft. He should flock him with a bird. With the birch. But John went fishing all the same while they went off to church. He fished and fished, hour on hour, but nothing came to bite. But just as he was giving up, he felt a forceful tug, in he quickly pulled the line to find that he had hooked an odd and ugly, slimy thing, no bigger than a slug. A creepy, black and worm-like thing, no Slug. That's bad, son, came a voice behind, an old stuff passing by. You must not let it get away, it bodes no good, I do not lie. The, the creature writhed and coiled me time while from its mouth was clogged aside. Destroy that thing, or folk may die. And with that went the passerby. But did John do what he was told? Did John Lambton ever? Perhaps I'll take it home, he thought. But then its fetid smell, its glassy eyes and toothy mouth so quite disgusted John that there and then, with a yelp and a yell, he flung it down the village well. Its looks and smell made Lambton throw it down the village well. Come listen to the story of the Lambton worm. It will make you shudder, it will make you squirm. Like a serpent or a dragon or a fishy kind of lizard. A nightmare creation of a wish or a wizard. Quite a weird and evil creature was this monstrous worm. 
It's a horrid kind of vermin was this lantern worm. Not much later, John went off to fight in the Holy Land To win his spurs, his father hoped, and prove himself a man Nothing was thought of the worm he'd caught and cast down the deep, dark well Until one day when old widow mate got a shock and the horror began With a shriek she let go of the rope and the pail And bustled around with a monstery tail But poor Widow May was never believed For gay old woman we are deceived Yet the laugh was on them when they later had to tell How a dark snake-like form came one night from the well And more and more people claimed to have found Strange slimy trails and marks on the ground While the parson himself thought that he'd seen The hugest of worms crossing the green Till one day they saw it The truth was now out from the roof of the castle There came a great shout For all the gates are monsters about Come and listen to the story of the lantern worm It will make you shudder, it will make you squirm Like a serpent, or a dragon, or a fishy kind of lizard A nightmare creation of a witch or a wizard Quite a weird and evil creature was this monstrous worm Yes, a horrid kind of vermin was this lantern And soon the story spread abroad. This was Lambton's worm. The worm he'd caught that Sunday had grown to awesome size. But what could Master John now do? As this hungry worm began to wreak destruction, slaughter livestock, plague, and terrorize. Oh, help us! Cry the shepherds! Please! It's, it's eating all our sheep! Oh, save us! Wailed the villagers! We're too afraid to sleep! It's all of fifteen yards in length With deadly speed and fearsome strength Soon there'll be no livestock left To harvest left to reap As it flattens all the fields around And leaves our cows and sheep The giant worm would spend the day Ravaging the land Gobbling flocks and murdering herds Until it had had its fill and then at night from Lambton Castle all would watch with fear His sleeping bulk coiled around the top of Pensher Hill My goodness! Old Lord Lambton cried What is to be done? It's eating all our sheep They're calling this the Lambton Worm We're being blamed by everyone In this castle dare To stalk the brute with sword or snare Strange to say But the man we need is John My errant eldest son If only Master John were here He wouldn't cut and run Knights from all across the north The bravest and the best Were called to try with lance and sword Against the deadly foe But the challenge was too great for not one could pass the test They left the worm to ravage on They left the worm to grow Defend us, beg the peasant folk The people of the weir It's hopeless, shot the beaten knights Their faces white with fear this is no normal animal, but something preternatural. There's nothing we can do, unhappy people of the weird.
Just give it little tasty snacks, then steer well clear. And so they filled white drinking troughs with milk by the gallon. To slake the monster's appetite, they did this every day. Days and weeks and months went by, there seemed no end in sight of filling troughs with creamy milk to keep the worm at bay. And all they seemed to do was feed the worm, then hope and pray. All seemed lost, all was gloom. The menace of the worm cast the land into shade. When who should appear? Who should return but young John Lambton back from crusade? No longer a wastrel, no more a lost cause, but a fine and manly and upstanding young knight. When he heard of the ruinous worm, he declared, I'll take on this creature, I'll not shirk a fight. For happily this worm is the self-same worm that I caught in the weir all those Sundays ago. So now it's my duty, yes, now it's my task, to free our land from this wormish woe. I'll visit the witch, the witch of the wood, and ask for a spell or a charm, or sagacious advice, a word to the wise, as to how I may keep me from harm. So doughty Sir John went to visit the witch, to find out how best to prepare for his imminent fight with a monstry might that had driven good folk to despair. he came to her cottage, the witch of the wood seemed to know just what he was about, and this wild ancient crone in an alien tone gave advice half in song, half in shout.
So a blacksmith most skillful was hastily summoned Who knew well his craft, quite the best Such armor bespoke and bespikey he fashioned That all acclaimed him a craftsman of legend John Lambton himself was impressed And John warned his father If you hear the sound of my horn in the valley I've won the day Then let out the hounds But keep your own ground Don't come to meet me I must see a hound Please, father, do as I say Then off went Sir John with sword and with armor, silvery armor, spikedly sharp, and he waited with both trepidation and valor on an island in the midst of the worm troubled river, where once he had caught tench, trout, and carp. And he waited and waited for an age, so it seemed, and the air was sinister still. When suddenly there from the river bank gleamed the brutal bulk of the noxious fiend, here was the beast he must kill. Quite awesome splash Crashed the monster John gasped in awe At the sight of the worm Yet stood fast his ground And held his sword firm The vast worm lunged John struck at its head But a flick of its tail Made him think he was dead